This is Andy Perrault of ID Boxing. I'm joined by Gareth A. Davies here in London. Gareth, firstly, how are you? I'm good. I remember our last interview now. We did it in the street by my car, didn't we, in Bethnal Green. How did it do? did well, as always, Gareth, as you it said. Matters. It matters how they do. And we were, uh, hang on. Oh, no, it was Shields and Marshall. That was a brilliant press conference. An amazing venue. Hey, and what a night. Are we recapping that as well? What a night. We will recap that, but let's just start off with a reason we're here. Fury Chisora 3. Gareth, as a member of the media, somebody who's followed Tyson and Derek's career throughout your uh, entirety working in the sport, how much of a, a surprise, or if at all, was it to you to see the negative response to this fight being announced? Not, not a surprise that there was a lot of negativity towards it and a lot of huffing and puffing. Um, the problem is that Tyson's beaten Derek before, but when you listen to the promoters and who they were looking at in terms of opponents and who was available and who was not, and the fact they wanted to get him out, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's the best of an average bunch. I mean, but having said that, without that being the headline, um, Derek Chisora is a different fighter. Yes, he's a bit more weather-worn, but he's a different fighter. Tyson Fury's a different fighter now. I think they'll deliver excitement. It's the Tyson Fury show. I'm looking out on the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium here in, in Tottenham, North London. There'll be 60, 70,000 people here and they'll be coming for the, not the hardcore boxing fans, it'll be the mainstream fans coming for a night out in their fur coats, in their parkas, in their finery and in their bling, in the cold, in the rain, saying that's the night I was there, sitting under a Mac with an umbrella or enjoying a beautiful moonlit night. I haven't checked what the moon is that night. And just going, I really enjoyed seeing Tyson Fury, one of the greats of the heavyweight division in the modern era. I think he'll win, but there are terrible banana skins out there as well as as Bob Arum mentioned when he had Tommy Morrison, who he was promoting to to fight Lennox Lewis. Uh, they they got Michael Bent in, and Michael Bent knocked him out in the first round because Morrison was gung ho. The, so the Morrison Lewis fight, which would have made money, Morrison was a very popular fighter, as you'll know, um, never happened. Um, it didn't surprise me about the negativity. There was negativity about Tyson Fury in the third Wilder fight, if you remember. Um, they might fight a fourth time yet, those two, by the way. So, yes, they wanted Usyk, Alexander Usyk. Usyk didn't want it. They wanted Joshua, clearly wanted the Joshua fight. But his management team and, I think, Matchroom eased him out facing, as I've said to you before, and because and, and they said to Joshua, it's not the right fight for you, this is an end game fight. You can elongate your career and we need to build you again after two losses. With Derek here, are you surprised that he maybe wasn't more involved on stage with Tyson? Uh, but they never, never quite saw that aggressive nature we can and we have been used to seeing from him. It got close. And I was with them three or four weeks ago when it got close. I was doing an interview with Tyson for Talk Sport on the live broadcast. And Derek suddenly appeared in a mask. And Tyson went, who's that? And I said, it's Derek. So I was caught between them, just, you know, as you do, as you do, flicking your mic, trying to pick up all the words. I think there was more enmity there that night between them. Because they had, they, they had war, then they had peace in their words. And um, they, got, they got quite serious with each other. Um, Maybe it stimulated the contract being sorted, that, that little repartee ringside at Joyce and Parker. I always, I was there in Munich. I was there in Munich on the night where Derek fought 12 really tough rounds with Vitaly Klitschko and his chair squeaked back at the press conference when David Hay was at the back of the room giving him jip. And you always wonder at that moment with Derek whether his chair's going to squeak back and he's off and he's lost it, because he can lose it. I even thought he might lose it with Frank Warren today. There was a moment, wasn't there? You're watching these things. There's a lot of security here. Right? He's a mature fighter. Tyson Fury kind of revealed he's getting around about two million. He doesn't want to scupper it. And he might be on Tyson Fury's undercard then against Alexander Usyk. It's not the old pals act, but... If Chisora, if Chisora can unseat or dethrone Tyson Fury, he'll do it because he'll get 15 million for the rematch. And I guarantee you there's a rematch clause. Has anyone asked? I asked Derek and then he said that he's been gagged by Frank so he can't speak about it. Yeah, well, we'll see. They'd be silly not to have a rematch clause because... 
Well, I mean, Fury could fight anyone, actually. You would imagine there's a rematch clause yeah. as it's a voluntary, you would yeah, think it, so. Exactly, exactly. So I don't know either, I haven't asked them, but um, if you want me to, I'll nip out. Frank Warren's sitting over, over there speaking to a couple of the media, and um, I could nip over there and see if you... No, but I'm sure there's a rematch. So, um, where were we with it? Yeah, it's, look, they both sold the fight well today. For, follow the timeline of Derek Chisora Frank as well. <laughs> Frank, is there a rematch clause? I'm d <laughs> Sorry? Only if. Only if. There you go. Now we know. Only if. So, um, and, and you can translate that later. O only if. If Fury loses, there is. If Ch Chisora uh, loses, there isn't. Um, so, um, um, look, follow the timeline with Derek, though. I mean, we, we know Tyson Fury is considered the number one heavyweight in the world uh, in this era. Um... Look what he did with Deontay Wilder. Look how easily Deontay Wilder put Robert Hellenius away the other night. He's such an incredible puncher. And then follow the timeline of the work that Derek Chisora has done. He really gave Alexander Usyk plenty of problems in that fight, in his second heavyweight fight. He just beat Kubrat Pulev, I think by a razor slim margin. It could have gone either way that fight. Pulev went 10 rounds with Anthony Joshua. Usyk, Joshua. So, so I know styles make fights, but follow that whole timeline. And he's not that bad an opponent. Um, and I think people will come here and watch it as an event. Yeah. Do you expect it to sell out, Vingarov? Well, it's, uh, I think they'll have 50 or 60,000 in here. Oh, what's sell out? 80? 70. So, look, it's not my job to sell it out. It's not my job to do YouTube social media interviews. I, it's not my job to watch people queuing up behind you to interview me because <laughs> um, I'm getting out of here at some point because I've got my homework to do. Um, I'm not paid for this gig. It's all voluntary work. You know, it's keeping the young people in business, yeah, keeping them in the industry. Um, it's not my job to, to sell this out. I think, I think Fury is a massive crossover star. There's a Netflix series being made about him at the moment. Um, that, 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 you know, his whole life is forensically detailed. I think he's very popular with the British public. It wouldn't surprise me to have 60,000 in here for a Derek Chisora fight. That's not bad. It's good they did it in London and not Cardiff, though. Because Cardiff, they wouldn't have got. I think they'd have got 30,000 to Cardiff. But not from the risk, though, of if, obviously, with it take, taking place here, if the weather turns, there's no roof here at the Spurs ground. Oh, totally. That's what I said. They'll be in there in the rain max and their fur coats and their umbrellas. But... You know, everyone will be shop Christmas shopping by then. You know, the lights will be on. You know, Gypsy King in lights. Yeah, there is. A, it's a shame there's no roof. Because I, I, I don't actually know why these football stadia that are being built here didn't have roofs. It, it, I mean, this could have had so many different things in it. Um, Gav, just one more on the heavyweight division. On Anthony Joshua, December 17th was a, a date being touted. We haven't had kind of an, an, anywhere near an opponent being announced. Do you have any knowledge as to where things stand with him yet? No, it's really quiet, and, and they, I don't think they've chosen an opponent yet. Um, Tyson Fury said an interesting thing to me earlier, how um, he thinks he'd, he won't get in the ring with Anthony Joshua ever. I think he will. I think he will, but he doesn't think he will. Um, he says, I've got enough money, he's got enough money, so sometimes the fight isn't going to get signed. And now Anthony Joshua's got enough money that he doesn't need to fight this year. He spoke emotionally. We were both out in Saudi, weren't we, yeah? He spoke emotionally after that fight, saying to Eddie, I want to get back out, I want to get back out, because he was so frustrated with the emotional adrenaline running around his system. He doesn't have to fight in December. He doesn't have to fight. He, he, I mean... It's, again, the, the opponent for Tyson Fury, Chisora, people are unhappy about. We wanted Usyk or Joshua. It's really hard to find an opponent for Anthony Joshua, in my view, as well. Joe Joyce is a very tough opponent. Deontay Wilde is a very tough opponent. I make those both favourites against him. Daniel Dubois, it's a bit too early for Daniel Dubois, I think, and, and Anthony Joshua. They don't really sell a big fight. Dubois is on here, of course, against Laredo. Um, um, who, who? Oh, yeah, Otto Valley. Yeah, fine. He gave Tyson Fury a good test, so he's a good opponent. Um, 
But Joshua's got to go out there and be the destroyer again and build that reputation. And it's because memories of the last fight are always etched in people's minds. Of the last performance, you're only as good as your last performance. You're only as good as what happened in the last fight. And and um, and as the rain cascades right now down on this ground, look at it, it's cascading down. It's an ominous sign. <laughs> no, it's all getting rid of tonight, uh, uh, today and tonight. I think it'll be an amazing night on the night. You can grab me on the night and see if I'm wrong. I think it's going to be a beautiful moonlit night. I'm going to check the moon, but I think it'll be a beautiful night. So for that, Gareth, and just as you said earlier on, uh, sorry, uh, earlier on this week, or last weekend, rather, just gone. Terrific night, Shields, Marshall, that card. What did you make of it all, Gareth? Um, it was a real moment in time, I think, for women's boxing and for boxing itself. For two phenomenal fights at the top of the card, some really brilliant prospects starting. But for me, what I'd really like to see is those those elite championship fights, undisputed titles or or unifications go to 12 two-minute rounds. Because I feel like the fights are over very quickly and they're so close, some of them. I thought Baumgartner deserved the victory just. And I thought Clarissa Shields showed resilience, power, IQ, um, sense of the occasion and savannah marshall she was so hard so tough as nails um and i'd like to see them fight again but over 12 two minute rounds well gareth we'll leave it there now because i know this queue's getting longer and longer for you and there's a couple of people extra no, they've all, gone, they've all no well matt's got his you can yeah you can do but i appreciate your time gareth thanks for speaking Always to me pleasure, Andy. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. cheers gareth thank